So let's have a look at the today's uh, editorials. What are the important things that we need to discuss? Uh, all right, yes. So this one is with respect to the political perspective. So we are not going to discuss this. Uh, challenge of change. So this is with respect to Iran that a greater freedom should be given to the women. So uh, there are uh, reports that uh, poisoning of the school going girls. Okay, so reports that the school going girls have been poisoned in Iran. And uh, amidst all this widespread protest with respect to the women right. So that is article with respect to that. The important article which we are going to discuss today is to arrest or not to arrest is the question. Okay, So this article, we are going to discuss it from the uh, prelims perspective as well as from the mains perspective, general studies paper too. Okay, very important article to arrest or uh, not to arrest. Okay, So first of all, let us try to understand what is the uh, context of this uh, entire article. So the context is it, it's uh, with respect to the arrest of a former uh, deputy chief minister of uh, Delhi, Manish Sisodia. Okay, so we all know that ki, uh, the former deputy uh, CM of Delhi, Manish Sisodia, he has been uh, arrested by uh, CBI. Okay, and that that has brought this entire debate into question. That ki, uh, why this high profile agencies are being uh, using in order to uh, in order to cater the vested motives of the government okay so that is the entire issue that is being discussed over here now first of all what is the reason for arresting the deputy chief minister manish sisodia former deputy cm of delhi so the allegation is with respect to the misappropriation in the liquor policy that was introduced in delhi okay so a liquor policy was introduced in delhi in 2021 okay it was for the year 2021 to 2022 and around uh, 849 uh, private entities 849 private vendors uh, they were given the uh, license of uh, uh, liquor sale and all and uh, it is said that it, the licenses and all were given with open bidding okay so now the allegation has been put on uh, the former deputy CM uh, Manish Sisodia, who was handling this entire liquor excise policy in the state of Delhi, that ki, there were misappropriation, there were irregularities. Okay, the licenses were given with the vested motives, uh, so that they could get commission, and all that commission and all that was uh, received while granting of these licenses and all uh, that was used for funding the elections in the state of Punjab. Okay, so for funding the elections in the state of Punjab, all that money was appropriated okay so that entire allegation is there on Manish Sisodia he was first of all interrogated by CBI so CBI interrogated uh, Manish Sisodia for eight hours the interrogation took place however the allegation on uh, on uh, Manish Sisodia while the interrogation is that he was not cooperating during the time of interrogation and he was not giving clarification all the questions and all that was being asked to him during interrogation he was not cooperating he was not giving the clarifications that were required and as a result now cbi uh, decided that to issue a warrant and arrest him okay so that is the entire context of this article so from the exam perspective we are going to understand this uh, article okay now why do some law enforcement officials believe that key arrests are necessary so the first question uh, is that the first issue over here is that key the arrest of cbi is criticized over here taking into consideration the political motive behind the arrest okay so the cbi is being criticized in this entire picture now, why do some law enforcement officials, they believed that the arrest is necessary? So why arrest is necessary? That is being highlighted over here that the arrest acts as a de deterrence. Okay? So if you arrest uh, the personalities who are there in the public sphere and those who are uh, handling this high profile policies and all, if some misappropriation is being um, found over there, so these uh, law enforcement officials say that ki the best way to cater deterrence deterrence in the sense that ki in future what is the meaning of deterrence deterrence it means that ki if you are arresting such people who have allegations of such misappropriations and all this will set as a guiding example for future so in future if any other person or a minister if he is trying to do any something, please mute please mute yes uh, so in future, if any particular person is doing 
the very same thing. So this will be a guiding example in front of him that he, uh, the law enforcement agencies, they can arrest me. So this can act as a deterrence. Okay, so that is the first thing. Second thing, we all know that ki, um, when we talk about the judiciary, okay, so in the judiciary, the issue is that the process is very slow and steady. Okay, and we all know that ki judiciary, finally, they believe in the absolute evidences and all okay so that is the lacuna that is prevalent in the judicial sphere that ki, uh, we have seen that ki many of the cases just on the uh, pre uh, uh, just on the pretext that ki lack of evidences in spite of knowing that ki the person is victim he is the uh, the accused person is the victim but sometimes because of lack of absolute evidence we see that ki people are just uh, acquitted in the entire case okay so as a result this law enforcement officials they believe that ki we need to do the arrest because if we are doing arrest then it can act as a check mechanism for such people those who use such lacunas in the judicial system and all to get out of the uh, uh, such things, okay, such crimes and all. So that is the reason being given by the law enforcement officials over here, okay. Now, what is the dilemma which is faced by the law enforcement officials when it comes to making the, of the arrest, okay? So dilemma over here is that whether to proceed with the arrest or not, okay? Whether to show a soft policy, whether to show moderation with respect to arrest or to do arrest when it is absolutely necessary or to just do it at the first instance only. So that is a dilemma that is being faced by the law enforcement agencies that ki whether we should show a soft policy and we should not arrest only or we should show a rigid policy and we should do the arrest. That is the dilemma in front of the law enforcement policies. Okay. Now, when we talk about the legal provisions which are there with respect to the procedure of the arrest. Okay. So what are the legal prov provisions which are there? So when I talk about the code of the criminal procedure code, uh, code of the uh, criminal procedure so what are the mechanisms mentioned in the code of criminal procedure with respect to the arrest so let us try to understand this code of criminal procedure 1973 okay so what are the grounds like in what manner and uh, the arrest can be done okay so first of all uh, police can issue like you need to issue an arrest warrant with the permission of the magistrate so issue arrest warrant and then and then only a person can be arrested okay so that is a first procedure that is being highlighted in the code of criminal procedure that an fir has to be registered fir that is first information report has to be registered so fir has to be registered the full form of fir is first information report then uh, a particular police officer, the investigation officer, he has to go to the judiciary and issue and get the arrest warrant to be issued from the magistrate. Okay, so who issues the arrest warrant? So arrest warrant is issued by the judiciary. So police will register FIR. First information report will be registered. Then police will go to the judiciary and judiciary will issue the arrest warrant. And on the basis of that arrest warrant only, a person can be arrested. But... There is a flaw over here in the Code of Criminal Procedure that Section 41, which is there in the Code of Criminal Procedure. Okay, Yes. So what does this uh, Section 41? It says that Section 41 and says that okay, in certain circumstances where it is not possible for the uh, an official okay who is doing the arrest so in certain circumstances if it is not possible for the enforcement official to go to the judiciary and seek the arrest warrant then citing a reason so he has to cite a reason so you, you know that in every police station there is a diary okay so there is a general diary in the police station so in that general diary he has to just record a state a particular statement or he has to um, record into the general diary that ki because of the so and so circumstances it is not possible for me to go to the judiciary and get the arrest warrant issued and so without arrest warrant i am arresting this particular person okay so ideally ideally what is the procedure a police official enforcement official has to go to the judiciary issue the arrest warrant get the uh, warrant issued and then and then only a person could be arrested but there is a provision in code of criminal procedure that is section 41 which says that in certain circumstances if it is not possible for the official to go to the judiciary then what he can do he has to just mention the reason in the general diary and he can 
just without the arrest warrant, he can arrest the person. Okay. So this is the lacuna that is there into this code of criminal procedure. Now, what about the constitutional provisions? Okay. So do we have any constitutional provisions with respect to the rights of the person who is accused? So yes, definitely we have the constitutional provision. We all know that there is article number 22. It's a part of the fundamental rights, okay? Article number uh, 22. So this article number 22, it gives a certain important provisions with respect to uh, the protection in case of uh, arrest, okay? So what are the provisions under article number 22? Let us try to understand this. Now, first of all, when I talk about article number 22, uh, the name of this article that is protection against arrest and protection against arrest and detention in certain cases detention in certain cases now from the prelim perspective understand that article number 22 it contains two types of arrest mechanism okay first is uh, we have punitive detention and we also have preventive detention okay so there are two types of detention given in this article number 22 what is the essence of the article number 22 it says that ki even though you see even though if a particular person is accused so there is an allegation on a person that you have done the crime unless and until the crime is not proved you cannot declare that person as a criminal right so even if there is an accusation on the person that you are a criminal you have committed a crime then, then you cannot just declare that just on the basis of the accusation, you cannot say that the person is criminal. You need to protect that person, okay? So what are the grounds of protection? So that is being mentioned in this article number 22. And one more point that article number 22 mentions is that two types of detention, okay? First of all, it mentions punitive detention. Second, it mentions preventive detention. So what is punitive detention? First, we'll understand the grounds of punitive detention and uh, what are the protection which are given in article number 22. So article number 22, the first thing, it talks about punitive detention. Punitive detention means what? So what is the primary difference between the two? Punitive means that okay, there is an allegation on you that you have done the crime. Preventive means that you have not done the crime, but there is a doubt that you might do the crime. So in order to prevent you from doing the crime, you have the grounds of preventive detention. Okay. So understand the difference. Punitive means what? There is an allegation on you that you have already done the crime. What about preventive detention? There is a doubt that you might, there are some evidences, there are some things that which cite that you might create a crime, you might do a crime. So to prevent you from doing the crime, you have preventive detention. Okay. Now, first of all, we are understanding the grounds of punitive detention. So if there is an allegation on you that you might you have done the crime okay so uh, then what are the grounds of protection which are there under the prevent uh, under the punitive detention so first of all when the police come to arrest you police need to inform you the grounds of arrest okay so right right to be informed about the grounds of arrest okay so let's say if the police comes, issues the arrest warrant or does not issue the arrest warrant and comes to arrest a particular person on the ground that you have done the crime, then you have whole and so you have absolute right, fundamental right to know that what is the reason or, or what is the ground of arresting me. Okay, That is the first thing that is mentioned over here. Second important provision mentioned over here is that once a particular person is put into jail within 24 hours, excluding the traveling time and all so within 24 hours it is the duty of police official to take you to the nearest district magistrate okay so to uh, it is the duty of the police official to take you to the nearest district judge or magistrate one and the same okay and then that district magistrate will see the charge sheet okay so whatever fir is there first information report what is whatever is the charge sheet that will be evaluated by the district magistrate and then the magistrate will decide what will be done with you magistrate will check whether the crime is bailable okay if the crime is bailable then they will tell you then the district magistrate will tell you deposit this much amount and then you will be given a bail bail in the sense you are out on the temporary basis but you have to attend the court for the proceedings okay 
if the crime is non bailable like you, if you you are involved in a heinous crime there is an allegation of murder there is an allegation of abduction rape okay all that allegations are there on you it's a heinous crime then no bail you have to go into the jail okay so within 24 hours it's a duty of the police official that once you are arrested you have to be taken to the district magistrate district magistrate will evaluate the charge sheet and district magistrate will decide whether the offense is bailable or not and then accordingly the action will be taken okay so this is again a protection given to the person because unnecessarily if this particular mechanism is not there then unnecessarily police can keep you in jail until and unless they wish right so this particular safeguard is being introduced over here third important thing is that you have a right to hire a legal uh, machinery that is you have a right to hire a lawyer so these are the protections which are given under the article number 22 for a person who is arrested under punitive detention okay so these are the important things now what do you mean by preventive as i mentioned that preventive is that ki there is an allegation that you might do a crime okay like uh, you might do you are there is some linkage that you uh, something you are you are you are trying to plan that is uh, that can affect the indian society and all okay some type of action and all and strong evidences are there then under the pretext of preventive detention you can be put into jail okay but here the time limit okay here the time limit is 3 months so you can be put into jail under the preventive detention for the maximum period of 3 months see understand the difference this can come in prelims okay under punitive detention within 24 hours you have to be taken to the district magistrate here for 3 months for the maximum period of 3 months you can be kept in the police custody without taking you to the magistrate okay important thing second thing here also information has to be given that uh, why you are putting a person into jail even if it's preventive detention but the only thing is that if a particular information it is against the public safety the security of the country then there is no need to even mention about the grounds of arrest under punitive detention it is extremely essential to mention about the grounds of arrest but under preventive detention for prima facie you have to inform but if if you are mentioning the grounds of arrest and some vital information is there that can affect the uh, society and all integrity security of the uh, of the nation then there is no need to in inform okay so that is there now what after 3 months till 3 months you can keep the person in the jail under the pretext of preventive detention without taking him to the court okay after 3 months you have to take that person to an advisory board so there is an advisory board that has to be constituted and this advisory board is headed by judge of high court so high court judge will be presiding over this advisory board okay so you need to take that person after 3 months to the advisory board headed by the hc judge and then that board will decide what has to be done so further the extension can increase taking into consideration the evidence is given by the police okay so these are the two types of detentions that you should know given under article number 22 article number 22 to essence of the article is that even though there is an accusation on you of a particular crime you need to be protected okay so protection against arrest and detention in certain cases okay so two types of detentions we have understood punitive detention and preventive detention punitive we, we have understood that ki first of all punitive means what a person there is an allegation on the person that you have done the crime okay so a person has to be informed about the ground of arrest within 24 hours he has to be taken to the district magistrate and then the district magistrate depending upon the charge sheet will decide what has to be done and the third thing the person has a right to hire a lawyer okay about the preventive detention as i have informed that okay there there is just a suspicion there is just a doubt that you might do something that is against the society okay so on that pretext you are being arrested for 3 months you can be kept into a jail without taking you to a district magistrate maximum period of 3 months after 3 months you have to be taken to an advisory board headed by judge of a high court 
So this is all about the two types of detention. Now, when I talk about preventive detention, often there is an allegation that the preventive detention could be misused. Okay, and when you talk about uh, the democratic countries, okay, no democracy, even Britain. Actually, this particular law, preventive detention, it was a, it is a British era law. Okay, they introduced this law. Even Britain has repealed this particular act of preventive detention, but India has not repealed. So that is a basic criticism of. Um, a fundamental rights that ki this particular preventive detention could be misused by the government just on the mere suspicion and if you if you know the background we had similar law if you remember from the historical perspective uh, during the time of the indian freedom struggle rowlatt act was introduced by british okay so that can be a prelims question rowlatt act introduced in 1919 the Rowland Act was called as a Black Act and uh, a widespread satyagraha was organized by Gandhi in order to oppose that Rowland Act. So Rowland Act and this preventive detention, you can compare it. What was Rowland Act? Same thing. That is just on a mere suspicion. If a British had a doubt that you are trying to spread sedition, you are trying to provoke in uh, the other fellow members of the country against the British rule, just on the mere suspension, a person could be put into jail. There, uh, uh, important provision of the Rowlatt Act was that a person could be kept into jail for maximum period of two years without trial. Okay, so this can be a question from the uh, history perspective. Rowlatt Act, called as the Black Act. Okay, and here the ground was that he just on the mere suspicion a person could be put into jail for without conducting a trial, no trial, for a maximum period of two years. In prelims, once there was a statement on Rowlatt Act where it was mentioned that ki under the Rowlatt Act, a person could be put into jail for unlimited time span. So statement was false. Not for unlimited time span. Remember that a person could be kept in uh, jail without trial for maximum period of two years. Okay. So this is all about, these are all the important things which are there from the preliminary perspective. Okay. Now, what are the uh, safeguards, which are uh, other safeguards? Yeah, we have already studied the safeguards which are there in the Indian constitution. Now, apart from this, apart from article number 22, no safeguards are there into the constitution or no provisions are there in order to protect the uh, people from the arrest. Okay, So we are seeing that the increasing issues of uh, enforcement agencies targeting uh, the political personalities and all. Okay, So what steps can be taken in order to ensure that the arrest are made in scrupulous manner okay they're made only in the manner when it is required so what can be done in that case okay so we all know that ki, we do not have as such a proper law where uh, we can say that ki, arrest can be done only you have uh, concrete evidences and we do not have any such law with respect to this then it is whose onus to ensure that ki, you are doing arrest only in an in an appropriate manner so the onus is on the senior law uh, senior officers okay so it is the duty of the senior officers of the state the senior officers at the central level to ensure that okay, whenever they are doing such high profile arrest and all they try to ensure that they are using all the principles of objectivity and all and then and then only they are doing the arrest now we all understand that okay, these high profile agencies and all these senior Officials, they are under the constant pressure of the government, right? They are under the constant government pressure and all, uh, where the government tries to uh, use this officials, threaten them that if you are not listening, then your pro your promotion and all could be stopped or you could be transferred to remote areas and all. Under that pretext, they try to pressurize these officers and they try to settle their political scores and all. Okay, so in that case, what should be the stand of the officials and all? Okay, so what the senior officials can and do they can say that yes we will be doing the arrest but you give us a solid proof you give us a solid evidence only on the basis of the solid evidence only we will proceed through with this arrest and also they can uh, say that okay, fine we will be doing the arrest but we will appeal for judicial custody okay so we'll go to the judiciary we'll appeal for the judge we'll give the you give us the concrete evidences with this concrete evidences we will go to the judiciary if judiciary says that he, yes you can arrest that person you can keep that person in the judicial custody then we will go ahead so all these things have to be willingly come from the side of the police officials only okay so they have to ensure that objectivity is maintained while doing such high profile arrests they have to Oh, they have to 
fearlessly say that ki give us the so whomsoever is creating pressure on them they should with the confidence without any fear they should say that ki give us the solid evidence then and then only we will proceed with the arrest and in a better manner they can say that you give us the evidences we'll go to the judiciary if judiciary gives the permission for the judicial custody definitely will go ahead with the arrest and most important thing all these arrests and all they should be subjected to judicial scrutiny okay so this is an important thing okay so any such arrest is happening where there is a doubt of some malefide intention judicial scrutiny should take place okay judiciary should start an investigation against that respective official and enter and step up into the matter check that ki whether there is some malefide intention and all behind this arrest and try to uh, in, do the investigation and take measures against that respective official okay so your judiciary can also play a better role the role of monitoring all this definitely we understand that ki uh, already lot of pending cases are there but still uh, we can expect that ki if any such high profile cases there in news and all judiciary can enter into this uh, sphere judiciary can do the scrutiny and if if there is a doubt of some sort of malefide intention judiciary can step in and start the investigation against the respective official okay so this is all about this particular editorial from the prelims perspective definitely the editorial is important article number 22 is important preventive detention punitive detention okay entire procedure of arrest that we have arrested uh, that we have understood that is also important and uh, from the history perspective we have even understood the raul attack okay so this is all about this uh, article uh, moving towards uh, one more article uh, that is uh, there in the paper i'll just give a glimpse of this article yes a case to promote uh, border tourism okay a case to promote bo border tourism so uh, it has been said that ki in the border areas and all we need to promote tourism okay uh, so many schemes and all have been introduced by the union uh, government union cabinet with respect to promoting uh, border tourism so i'll uh, mention one uh, such important scheme that is there in place and the name of the scheme that is uh, the india's uh, initiative on border tourism is vvp okay so vvp uh, this is vibrant vibrant village program so vibrant village program it's a centrally sponsored scheme centrally sponsored scheme vibrant village program okay so what is the scheme now first of all the scheme was announced in union budget of 2022 2023 okay so in this budget the scheme was introduced so here the focus of the scheme was that improving the quality of life in, uh, of the people and developing the tourism in the villages and all in the northern border so specifically which areas they are focusing under this scheme they are focusing the area of himachal pradesh uttarakhand then uh, arunachal pradesh so bordering areas okay arunachal pradesh is there sikkim is there and ladakh all right so this is the scheme that is uh, uh, vibrant village program where they are trying to focus on the development of the tourism in the villages uh, in the northern border that is specifically they are focusing on himachal pradesh uttarakhand arunachal pradesh sikkim and ladakh area okay so encouraging tourism in this area that is the focus over here there is one more scheme that is there that is border area development program border area development program but these two schemes are different border area development program it's a, a very old scheme introduced in the year 1986 okay and always remember that okay, if any such schemes are going on in the border bordering areas and all the schemes are usually implemented by ministry of home affairs because the border uh, these are the very sensitive areas because these are the areas where we share border with pakistan or with china and all okay so as a result you require this very sensitive areas and all and so we see that okay, the schemes in this area with respect to the border development or the village vibrant program these are being run by ministry of home affairs okay okay so that you need to understand over here uh, one more important thing certain important uh, uh, 
tourist places uh, are being highlighted into this article with respect to Ladakh. So let's have a look at these uh, tourist places. I'll use the map okay yeah. so uh, this particular article it talks about the important places with respect to ladakh so the important places it talks about is uh, it talks about the siachen glacier which is we know that a disputed area here there is a karakoram pass it talks about the karakoram pass uh, then it talks about the hot springs which are there over here in the chushul valley there are hot springs this is a pangong so lake you can see over here pangong so lake it can be a preliminary question because uh, there is a plan to uh, bring this lake under under uh, Ramsar site, okay, Ramsar wetland. Yet it is not declared, but there is a plan to bring this lake under the Ramsar site. So you can see over here this Pangongso Lake. Uh, it is a uh, uh, between India, that is uh, Ladakh and China. Okay, so uh, these areas are important. And uh, yeah, one particular pass that is being discussed into this uh, article is the Karakoram Pass. So I'll try to open this. So Karakoram Pass, uh, it's an uh, important pass uh, which is uh, mentioned into uh, this article. And uh, uh, this um, Karakoram Pass, I hope it opens, yeah. So it is uh, located between India and China. And uh, to be precise, it is, so here you can see, uh, to the right of Siachen Glacier, to the right of the Siachen Glacier, you can see over here mentioned Karakoram Pass is mentioned. So Karakoram Pass, it is between Union Territory of Ladakh and uh, this province of China. This uh, this is the autonomous province of China that is called as Jin uh, Zing X I N J I A N G Zing Ziang Province of China. Okay. Uh, so this particular pass, it's between India and China to be, pre to be precise, Union Territory of Ladakh and uh, between the uh, Chinese Autonomous Province over here. Okay? So this is being mentioned into this article so that you should be uh, knowing it. And this pass is uh, towards the uh, eastern side of uh, Siachen Glacier. Okay, So an important pass which is mentioned over here. Then the next important uh, thing, it talks about the Pangong Lake. So this is a beautiful Pangong Lake. You can see over here, bluish in color that is being talked into this article. So this is the Pangong So Lake. We have seen uh, just now the Pangong So Lake in the map. Okay, so important uh, lake uh, from the exam perspective. Now, when I talk about this Pangong So Lake, it is called as a tourist paradise. And most important attribute of this lake is that it is endoric lake. Okay, so what is the meaning of this? Okay, so there is no water outflow. I'll mention over here. H-E-I-C, Endhoric Lake, okay, Pangong So, P-A-N-G-O-N-G, -G, Pangong, uh, uh, Pangong Lake, it's between India and China, okay, so it's between India and China, it's a tourist place and most important, it's an Endhoric Lake, what is the meaning of Endhoric Lake? No water outflow, it means that it does not meet any sea, it does not meet any ocean, nothing, the water gets uh, evaporated okay due to the sun's heat the water gets uh, gets ev uh, evaporated so no water outflow is there that you need to understand over your important significance and india is trying to uh, india is bidding for this lake to be declared as the ramasar site okay one more important thing about this lake is that it's a salt water lake okay so it's a salt water lake the other important lakes in the Ladakh area are the other, uh, yeah, uh, the two Ramsar sites which are there in the Ladakh that also I'll mention over here. So there are two important Ramsar sites in Ladakh. One is Sokar. Okay, Sokar and uh, Sokar is basically a wetland area. It's a Ramsar site from the Union Territory of Ladakh, okay, Sokar. So when I talk about Sokar, so it, it has two important places over here. Uh, one is Sokar Lake. So say Sokar Lake is also very hypersaline lake over here, okay, Sokar Lake, hypersaline lake in this area. Okay, and uh, one more uh, lake over here is there, that is uh, Stat Sapuk Lake. So within this, within this Ramasa site, okay, within this Sokar Ram, Ramasa site, so Sokar is a wetland. Within this, there are two important lakes. Sokar Lake, it's an hypersaline and start Sapuk Lake. This is a freshwater lake, okay. So this is one Ramasa site. The second Ramasa site is Somorori. 
so morori this is also one more ramsar sign and uh, this is also a salt water lake so all these important things are mentioned into this article okay salt water lake all right so all these things you can remember from for the prelims perspective what are the ramsar sites from uh, from the state of uh, from the union territory of ladakh so you can remember that you have so uh, sokar and you have uh, so morori as the two important ramsar sites and also uh,